So I speak a lot about how one should stop reasoning with their desires. But I think there's another way of saying it that can make more sense. Um, we could use the word doubt. I could use the word doubt as well. Don't doubt your desires. But I think another one is that to not condition your desires. I think conditioning is something that is very common. And Neville said that too. He said one of his lectures that, you know, you want it, but you condition it. You condition it with all these things, and that's why you can never have it. And what what is a condition? A condition to me is you either you, you sway from the present moment. A condition is you taking your desire and then bringing the future to it. Or you take your desire and you sabotage it with the past. You don't remain present with it. Because present to remain present with your desire is to be one with it. And to be one with it means to for it to be fulfilled. You can't desire if you can't there's no desire in I am. So if you're saying I am whatever and you're still desiring, then you're not it yet because you're still desiring. Neville says that if you're desiring to stop it right now and assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So um, if one could see that there are no conditions in the mind, there's nothing you have to meet prior to imagining something or to feeling what you want. Well, if that's the case, then... I shouldn't live in desire and imagination. There's no need to walk around in my mind desiring things because it's my mind and I can have what I want in it. I can hear what I want in it. I can feel what I want in it. I can have as much peace as I want. And the moment you start to free yourself, that you realize that in this world of imagination, you truly are the cause of your own suffering in it. If you can accept that, I think you're well on your way to freeing yourself. Because... You're, once you see that your suffering is a conscious choice inside the imagination, then you're going to choose consciously what you want. But I think you can only get there unless you accept and acknowledge the fact that you are the cause of everything within you. Through that acceptance, you can then begin to, more in an effortless way, accept good things that you want for yourself. And I mean what you want, not what you think you should want. There's a big difference between imagining because you think other people want this for you and imagining what you want. So you must, if you don't know what you want, you must, like I didn't, you must spend some time figuring out what it is you want. It could be something small, you might be surprised. Maybe you don't want what everyone else does, which is fine. As long as... um. Just do everything in love in the mind. At least try to do it all in love. And to do things in love is to not be in fear. So to add conditions, I think that it's us moving. What I mean by that is us moving towards the future and the and the desire. We go to assume that. Neville says, stop desiring, assume that you have it. So I must stop desiring. That's the first and foremost. I must leave the world alone and stop desiring inside my mind. But in order for me to stop desiring, I must see that my wish is granted. So, but I cannot really have it granted if I start to bring the future towards it. If I start to, well, what if this happens? What if that, well, how would the means happen? Well, how would it uh, come into, into the world? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how things come here. I don't know the way it works. It does work. I just don't know how, I don't know when it happens. I don't know. There's a definitely a, a difference between myself, the assumer, and the mechanism that is at play here. It seems like it will, it knows the means and I don't. It seems that it is in control in a way that I'm not, in some sense. And I mean me, the outer me. So I'm called to just assume, not to devise the means. I'm called, I'm called to assume, not to condition. And an example of that would be me either going and saying, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? Let me either let me change the desire or let me not have it at all. That's conditioning. I'm going to the future. Or I go to the past and use the past to sabotage the desire in that way. Or I say I can never be that because of my past. Or I look at my limiting present. I say my present's the reason why I can't be it. Well, if I do all of that, then... I'm conditioning. I'm not called to condition. I'm called to be present with my thought. Whatever thought it is. And if you can see that most of the anxiety stems from the present, or sorry, from the past and the future, 
the removal of these um, will allow you to be more present with the desire of it being fulfilled. And to really be present, one must remove the external world completely from the mind. So when you imagine, you imagine just as though there is no external world. To fully immerse yourself in the experience of imagination, to let it really captivate you, you must remove the idea of an external world. You must really make imagination the only thing that's real to you in that moment. You must see the desire already being fulfilled. You, The inner man already is the thing that it wants to be in imagination. So there, no, there's no such thing as desire in imagination. Desire comes from the external because there's just no need for it in imagination. What, what cannot be fulfilled in here? So you walk around as if all your needs are met. And you become the one whose needs are met in imagination. You can become that because you already are it in imagination. Everything already is so in this world. But a practice that must happen is you must detach yourself from the future and the past and the external and become fully immersed in the present moment in imagination. Or I should say the present experience of it. That's why Neville says in the five lessons to imagine, and if he has, he has a step-by-step process, I think it's the third step, he says, to imagine in the here and now. Imagine fulfilling, imagine you experiencing your de- desire in the here and now. Well, that's the present moment. So we must become present fully with our imaginations, and you can't become present if you are conditioning your desires. You can't really have them fulfilled. If you're swaying between the past and the future, you must be settled in the I am, where there is no fear, where where there's only fulfillment. And it doesn't matter what it is. Um, It's a feeling. It's a present tense feeling. You bring that present tense feeling to anything in the mind. And because the I of man cannot be changed, really, with the future and the past. It can only be changed with the present. Because our future and our past are shaped by what we do now. And I repeat this a lot, um, and I will continue to repeat it because sometimes it needs to be said in one way for it to click. And I think maybe the term conditioning is better than reasoning. Don't condition your desires. Imagine with no conditions. Feel with no conditions. What I mean by that is don't say, I can't feel X because my external isn't the way I want it to be. Neville says that if you continue to to, to judge after your appearances, you will be enslaved by them. We're not here to judge by our appearances, but by what we see in imagination. So it's the opposite. But if you continuously judge after your senses, well then, yeah, you will be enslaved by them forever. If you want to be freed from the senses, you must abandon the senses, abandon the external, leave it exactly the way it is, and change the conceptions of yourself inside of imagination, where you already are that. So um, this is more of a repetition of what I'm saying, just in a different way. But learn to understand imagination. And what I mean by that is learn to understand that there is no conditions inside this world. There's no requirements you must meet in order to assume a position in it. It's totally unconditional. It doesn't demand moral perfection for you to be able to assume what you want. It doesn't demand your world, your external world, be perfect. There'd be no point of it. It allows you, regardless of where you're at, to assume the thing you want. It's giving, if you will. The imagination is very giving. So, I hope that change in thought of changing the word reasoning to conditioning helps. That a conditions the future, the past, or you, or a feeling that doesn't allow you to be in the present moment of it. And um, another word could just be said as doubt don't doubt the desire um you can think of a man who doesn't doubt as equal to god but we reason and we doubt and we condition we don't allow the thought the perfect thought to be itself we don't allow ourselves to experience it just as it is a perfect thought the thought is showing me that i'm expressing what i want what more can i have in here what more could i want in here so I hope that helps.